Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight, tonight, 18, and our nightly recording of a coding bat solution while schools are closed. Tonight, we're looking at array 123, which is in the warm up 2 section, and this video looks at the Python problem. The problem states given an array of ints, return true if the sequence of numbers 123 appears in the array somewhere. So we look at this first example, and we see that this returns true because that sequence 123 is right there. The second example returns false because nowhere inside this list do we see the sequence 1, 2, 3. And then the third example returns true because we can see that sequence right here at the end. So when I talk to students about this, I really highlight two big ideas. Uh, the first one is placing the return statement. So when deciding where to place the return statement, ask yourself if you can stop looking as soon as you find what you're looking for. If that's the case, you can return right away when... when you find what you're looking for. for. So essentially, this means that there will be a return inside the loop. And this is often one of the problems that a lot of students run into when they're first starting problems like these, is they, they, they either they don't know whether to put the, the return statement inside the loop or outside the loop. Now just to note, you are going to need to return outside the loop in case you don't find 1, 2, 3. And that's going to be our catch-all return false. There it is. Wrong language there. Hit go, and you see I get some of them right. Okay, the second big idea is called reading frames. And a reading frame is what I refer to as, as how many elements are being inspected at a time. In this case, we're looking for a sequence 1, 2, 3, which means we have a reading frame of 3. And I wrote an example down here just to show you this. So here's our list, and the index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So each time I go through the loop, I have to check three elements. And so if I think about my loop and I start at i is 0, I'm going to have to access index 0, 1, and 2. When i is 1, I'm going to have to access index 1, 2, 3. When i is 2, I'm going to have to access index 2, 3, 4. And technically, I can stop now. Because there's not three elements to inspect if I move along. So my reading frame are those three elements. And that means with this problem, when I write my loop, I want my loop to reach two in this case. So let's start this problem by writing a loop to go through and we're going to set it up to go from index 0 to index 2. So we're going to say 4i in range 0 comma and remember it's always going to be i is less than that value with this way of setup so we're going to say 3 because i won't reach 3 it has to be less than 3. And we're going to increment by 1. And I'm going to write a new statement in here and that statement is going to say if nums at i is equivalent to 1, and nums at i plus 1 is equivalent to 2, and nums at i plus 2 is equivalent to 3. Well, in that case, we're going to return true. And I hit go. Oh, and I get a list index at a range. So why is that? Well, it's the reason why we're getting that in this case is because opposed to Java, you get one index out of range and it doesn't actually run your test cases. And so the problem that I have here is that even though if my length here, my length is 5, this would be fine, but if my length was smaller than, than this, I'm going to get an index out of bounds error. So what I have to do is I have to change this number so that it's related to the length of the list. And we can see in this case that the length is 5. This is going to be the length of nums minus 2. I hit go, and there it is. So a quick little rule, if you want to kind of add that, is that you can always set up these, these loops. If you know the length of your reading frame, it's going to be the length of nums minus the reading frame length minus 1. Because our reading frame, our reading frame length here is 2, and so our reading frame length is 3, and so I subtract 2. If you're working in Java, you have a lot more flexibility with your loops. Um, and it's a little easier to see. So if you're still trying to figure out this idea of reading frames, it might be helpful to go look at the Java example. I hope this video helped. Have a great day.